All right, welcome back. Um, previously, we showed how to create a site column, showed how to create a site content type. Uh, now we're going to show basically how to pull those together uh, and how to use those content types in two different document libraries. Um, and this is all in preparation for eventually creating a Power Automate flow that will move, you know, run on a schedule and move files from our main document library into the archive document library based on the status being set to archive. So the first thing I want to do is uh, make sure that we have our document library. So we have one called documents here. Uh, that is the standard default one that every document, every SharePoint site has or starts out with. Uh, but I want to create another document library called archives. Uh, to do that, essentially I go back to the home page click the new button up here and select document library and I'll just simply call this archives and show in site navigation just means it'll appear in the left hand navigation a link to it will appear in the left hand, left nav and I'll click create and there we go so now we've got our documents library we've got our archives library and we are ready to go next thing we need to do is apply um, the content type that we're going to use or that site content type we created called document with status to both of those libraries and the reason this is important is that the action we plan to use in Power Automate to move the files from documents to archives uh, requires that both the source library and the target library have the same schema. Schema is essentially the organization, the architecture. So they need the same columns, they need the same possible column values. Uh, so that's why we need to use the site content type. It gives us that uniformity so that we know that a document that's in the documents library has all the same properties as a document in the archives library. So they have a common definition, common denominator, if you will. Uh, so to do that, let's start with the documents library. Essentially, we go to the Documents Library, click the gear up in the top right corner here, and go to Library Settings. Now, in here, we need to do a little... So if we scroll down, we'll see that we're using the standard site con or the document content type, which is the title, and there's a name field, but it's, it's hidden here because it is kind of... It, it's a hidden column. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, if we want to add our own site column, our own, I'm sorry, our own content types or a custom content type to this library, we need to go to the advanced settings here. And in the advanced settings, there is a button or an option to allow management of content types. And that by default is set to no. I'm just going to set that to yes and scroll down, 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 down and click OK. And what that does, once we enable that, we'll see that there's a new section on the settings page called content types. And we can see that the default is simply document. So what I want to do is add from existing site content types. This is why we created that content type first. So you do have to make sure you do these things in order. Uh, if you try doing them in reverse order, it's not going to work right. So I'll select add from existing site content types. And I know that I created that in the custom content types group. And there is my document with status. Select that, click add, and click OK. Uh, so now, when we scroll down to our, doc our content types section, we've got document and document with status. Now, I know that I want to use this document with status all the time. I don't want to use that document content type at all. So there are two steps here that we need to take. First is I need to change the new button order and default content type to make this document with status the default content type. Um, this is really important because if you take the next step without doing this, you're basically going to have to do this over again. Uh, so I'm going to select change new button order and default content type. And I'm going to, the default order is determined by this position from top. So I'm going to select document with status, change that to one, 
and I'm just going to uncheck the document, uh, the visible box for the document content type and click OK. And so now we can see that the document stat with status is visible and the default document is not visible and not the default. Um, now the next step, just to clean things up and, and tidy things up a bit, um, is I'm going to go back into the advanced settings. Now you don't have to do this. I just like to do it because it, you know, if people start poking around in here, it prevents them from potentially causing issues. Um, however, I will say that you want to make sure that you've kind of defined your content type clearly and that you, you know, if you think you're going to be making changes to your content type, don't do this step. Um, but if you are set with what your content, if your content type is what you want it to be, then this is sort of your way to lock it in. And that's essentially just go back into the advanced settings and change allow management of content types back to no and click scroll down click OK so that essentially just means that that content type section of the list settings or document uh, library settings page rather um, goes away but we still have that document status column in our uh, document library all right, so now what I'm going to do is essentially go to the archives library and perform those same steps over again. So just in case you missed it the first time, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to go to archives. I'm going to go through a little bit faster this time. Library settings, advanced settings, allow management of content types. Click OK. Add from existing. Go to custom, add the document with status, click OK. <clears throat> change the new button order, make the document not visible and change document with status to one, click OK. And then back to our advanced settings and allow management of content types off and OK and you're done. So now where we're at is that we have our documents library using that document with status content type so it has that document status column. We have our archives library using the same content type so that we know when we want to move something from documents into archives the process is going to work because they both have the same definition. They have the same columns, the same column values, etc. Uh, so there we go. So that's what we're going to talk about next, but that's for another video. Thanks, and uh, check out the Power Automate Flow next.